Good day, everyone. Dear guests of the conference, I'm very happy to welcome you here. Thank you and hello to those who have spoken before me here. Well, what I'm going to talk about today, what I'd like to tell you, well, let's leave tales of victory and successes to others. Well, many of you know a lot about our successes. My goal here is to talk about more down-to-earth things. It has become a sort of tradition. So I'll be talking about what we have today. I think I'll start with... Uh, it would be easier for me to start with uh, a common reference. Probably all of us in this way or another, have had to get our housing. Some have built their houses, some have purchased them, some have taken mortgages and so on. And the situations are all different and we have all been, well, in different situations and we have all faced risks. And minimum risk is when you're buying a completed apartment with minimal risk, but the price is, well, exorbitant. And everybody knows that. And those of us who are not afraid of doing something with their own hand would buy their apartments in shell form. While the most budget conscious of us we're buying incomplete apartments. While the block of apartments itself was just beginning to be built, the risks are both maximum and the price is minimum. So what possible outcomes can there be with minimum prices? So number one is uh, long construction and nobody knows how it will end and when it will be completed and sometimes you end up paying three times the price. Number two is when the constructor fails to complete the project. And number three, when the project is completed successfully. This is when you win, actually. But what we have in the end, if we buy an apartment at the foundation pit excavation stage, you pay one price. But once the, the building is complete, the block of apartments is complete, the sale price of apartments is three or five times higher than the actual cost of construction. So what I'm getting at, like back in 2017, we, you and I together, started the do you know motor project. So back then we positioned it as the motor wheel and there was certain media coverage, informational support for the project and a decision was made to continue the project and finance it through crowdfunding, the people's investing, so-called. From 2017 on, well, some time has passed, four years, to be precise, Speaking of active operations stage, the decision was taken in June 2017. And back then, the price, the whole price of the project was set, estimated at $40 million. Yet at the same time, we understand that there are costs associated with marketing, advertising, discounts, popularization and education, 
accounting, fundraising, and bank commissions and costs associated with the getting the money to the Sovelmash bank account. All in all, in the end, we expected Sovelmash to raise and receive about $20 million in total. The exchange rate of ruble to US dollar was around 56 rubles per US dollar. But we pegged it at 60 rubles per dollar. Is that a lot or not so much? Well, back then, at that moment, it all seemed pretty sufficient. I mean, the prices and the economy that we had back then. Did we understand back then? Did we realize the risks we were facing? Yes, we did. Perfectly. We knew from our personal experiences and life experience that over the life it will take us to develop the project, the economic situation will have changed. Did we forecast the changes for the better? No. We anticipated changes for the worse. We didn't expect the dollar to stay at 60 rubles per dollar. We expected it to grow. Couldn't we have factored in those risks? No, we couldn't, because otherwise nobody would have approved this project. So in our forecast, we used the methods and metrics that were relevant back then and still are relevant now. And thanks to that, the project took off. There have been lots of well, mishaps, haters, lots of negative coverage and feedback that the authors and participants of the project have faced. And when we met with state officials, they would tell us, how can we work with you? While the internet is full of hate speech and negative feedback. But time went on, haters sort of faded away eventually, and now there are very few of them still persisting for some reason. Because over the last years, the project has demonstrated its viability. And the project today is not just papers, or documents or ideas drawn on sheets of paper or accounting documents. No, it's a material object. It's a tangible material object. You've heard guys, speakers, telling about laboratories and everything we have. But the, the most important is the building that's being built. Today it can be seen from outer space, in fact. In drone videos it looks amazing. The, the building is at the stage of completed metal works and metal frame. And construction works have already started on the outer enclosure of the building. So the outer enclosure, enclosure is being built already. Over the last week, the building has changed significantly. A very pleasing milestone was the erection of the first concrete column on the site. Another milestone was seeing the metal work of the building being completed. And then they started working on roofs, on, on floors, on concrete castings. And now it's a pleasure to see a really big and beautiful, but it's become very light over the last week. Because the enclosing panels are already erected inside, and you can see the windows, the openings, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, it's filled with sunlight, and the building is transforming again. Just like a baby, a child, it's changing and growing day by day. And along with it grows the project. New equipment is coming in, new production facilities are 
emerging. Over the time we have been working on the design documents, uh, permits, uh, construction permits, lots of things to work through. State audit of the project. The economy was changing as well as it was entering the, well, the crisis phase. So in 2019, two years into the project, when we started building the, the building, actually, the COVID broke out, pandemic. And it was followed by a bolt from the blue, because metal prices skyrocketed, sand prices, cement, concrete, logistics and transport services prices also skyrocketed. And now see, look what we have here in numbers. Before the surge in prices, we had paid over 480 million rubles we had accumulated on our accounts. We paid it for the metal works and the equipment and materials mostly. 480 million rubles. And if we hadn't done that, we would have had to pay not 480 million, but at least three times that. And that would have been 1,440,000,000 rubles. That's more than the entire cost of the project at a rate of 60 rubles per dollar. That would have been catastrophic. A complete disaster. But credit has to be given to Sovelmash experts. We were in time to make the main procurements. And what I can say now, looking at the numbers, at our bank accounts, we've had a total of 1,252,077,881 rubles in investments so far. This is the number well, just in from the accounting office. This is basically the amount that we were talking at the onset of the project when one dollar was 60 rubles. And if we take the average exchange rate, that would be 74 rubles per dollar, because over that time it has spiked over 80 rubles per dollar. But the average is 74 rubles per dollar, so 20 million dollars is 1 billion 440, 480 million rubles. So now we are nearing the sum that we announced at the very beginning of the project, more than four years ago. We were, well, pretty accurate. And we used, we have used that money to build the metalworks, the frame of the building, to buy lots of equipment, to do lots of research and development work. How accurate the forecast was. But if we hadn't taken preventive measures, that sum wouldn't have been enough to even to order the metal for the construction. These are, well, the maths. Because inflation affects everything around us. So therefore, well, previously we needed 20 million dollars. 
we had 20 million to raise. Now, considering the economic situation and the economic developments with all the processes we have been through, that the world has been through, so now we don't have any more proving of our concept to do. We don't have to prove it to government officials. So now I can give you the figure and tell you things straight as they are. So as of today, with the dynamics that we are observing, if there are no surges anymore, but the, the forecasts are favorable right now, So, with this in mind, we expect the project to cost 60 million and Sovelmash 30 million. Is that a lot? Well, comparing to other projects, it's not much at all. And many projects that have claimed to cost much more and started together with us at the same time with us, they are gone now. Many of them failed, some of them have been mothballed. And I've talked a lot to people that were employed on other projects and are now unemployed. To some investors, these numbers may look frightening because they expected one thing and ended up with another thing. Well, of course, I expected lots of other things, of course. For example, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union promised that we will have free public transport from 1980. And let me tell you honestly, back in 1980, there was no free public transport. Back then I was given free rides by the state, but those rides were, well, dangerous to say the least. On the other hand, there are people today who get free rides from the state in prison trucks. But this is a joke. So, what you have promised is not always what you end up with. So getting back to our issue, whether it is a lot or not so much. So getting back to my analogy with buying an apartment, we understand that at the beginning of the construction it's uh, worth almost nothing. If the project is not completed then you lose everything. And once you have completed the construction then you can sell it at three times the price. So if we can, if we take now the 30 million dollars, multiply it by 74, the exchange rate of the ruble, that would be 2.8 or 3 billion. Then the sale price of a facility like that, with all the equipment and so on, would be much higher. So it turns out that upon completion of the construction, if we wanted to sell this factory, we would be able to sell it not for 3 billion rubles, But, I'm sorry, I think I lied a bit. We would be selling it for 8 to 10 billion rubles. And that's a nice profit. That would, have provi that would provide a nice return on all investments, like 3x. Whether it's good or bad, as for me, it's nothing. Well, the production facility is now more expensive. That only shows that all the money we spent on fundraising and so on, they are backed by liquid assets. Because a building of such class, dust protected with anti-vibration foundation, with a design project like this, with the construction quality that we have, it has very few rivals. It's a building of the future. And the price for it will be, will be very good. And it will enjoy great demand. That's number one. 
Number two, very important. When we were beginning the project, we were talking about wanting to raise a class of small bourgeois, people living off income from their investment. As the Chinese government set forth, embarked on a quest to eradicate poverty and to build a middle class. They achieved success and basically eradicated poverty in China. So, we want small bourgeois to appear in Russia. And we want those small bourgeois to be active participants in our project. And that means we need people who would get income from the operations of our project. Number three. We do not rule out the possibility of getting income from speculating the project shares, the Sovelmash shares. And some investors enter our project with this exact goal in mind. And they are worried by the fact that due to inflation, the cost of the project has grown and they're afraid that they're going to lose their shares. That's a mistake. Let me explain. The project is not growing in, in a vacuum. It's growing in a certain economic situation. And if it's been affected by such processes, determined by inflation, it means that the project's product has the inflation well factored into its cost. So the developments will be marketed with all those factors considered. So the share of the profits per each participant, partner and investor, it will not become less paradoxical as it may sound. It might even grow. But if the project is underfinanced, then we can see it, view it as an incomplete construction project. There will be nothing in return. So, dear friends, we're now at a stage of, a pro of the project where the Rubicon has been crossed, the no return line has been crossed, and we have only one way to go for the goals that we have set. There is a notion in aviation, the point of no return, behind which you only have to fly forward, otherwise you won't have the fuel to get back home. So we are past the point of no return, and as they said during World War II, not a step back, only forward. There is no other way, no other option for all of us. I believe in the success of our project. I can't tell you exactly how things are going to develop, how the economy is going to change. I can only try to forecast that, but as you can see, our team is good at well, predicting things and taking relevant measures to keep it from unnecessary costs. And what we have been discussing at webinars, we're taking ownership of material assets in the form of the building once it's completed, and non-tangible, intangible assets, the cost of which will exceed the cost of our tangible assets. I mean, intellectual property, patents and so on. Right at this time, we're preparing mass production of angle grinders, industrial electric motors. We're already preparing to start small batch production. And all of this is sure worth something. And we're not going to be selling papers, as some of you said. The technology is sold as completed chain of assembly, manufacturing chain, that will allow 
producing our project according to the technology, together with trained staff and so on. And this costs very good money. And most importantly, even if we don't have customers for the product, we will be able to produce the motors ourselves and sell it on market and, and get as much profit as we would be selling the developments and the technology. And while previously this was hard to believe, still many people believed in that and actively invested in our project. With all the risks we had back then, then now, when we basically have half the building completed, when the changes that have taken place are so visible and tangible and significant, I think believing or not believing is well just out of question. So the project has undergone very serious changes. And very many people want to work on this project. And several times a day I have to to talk to people who want to work with us, who want to be on this project. And they're not unemployed. They have jobs, they have great salaries, but they want to be with us. And this attitude from specialists is worth a lot, as is your trust to the project, as is your contribution to the project. Those of you who trusted us with your money, money that we used to build what you see here, what my partners have been talking about. And the fact that we have been able to do this with this money that we managed to meet your hopes, although we are still far from, from the end, I believe that it will be a success. I wish you a lot of faith. Faith alone can do a lot, and lack of faith can lead to enmity and wars. We will succeed, and there will be peace. Thank you. Thank you.